Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast with Jay Gordon Duncan. And if you're wondering why the J, the answer is, I'm not a bagpipe player. If that joke doesn't make any sense, I encourage you to check out episode zero where I explain that joke, as well as the purpose of the This Is Gonna Hurt podcast, where we talk about faith, family, fitness, finances, and sometimes fun. Well friends, first of all, always thank you. You continue to be faithful listeners, and it's been exciting to start the new year. Thank you for everybody who's tuned in already. And if you're watching, this is an incredibly casual environment. I'm in my basement office, so you can see everything from the books on the shelves to the pull-up bar. But was not able to get into the studio this week. I've got the next two weeks booked for studios, and I've got some very exciting interviews to come up. But what I wanted to share this week, whether you're watching or listening, is this. I'm very fortunate that each Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, I lead a book author creative mastermind with a group called CACS, Christian Authors Community and Services. And this group is full of uh, authors, illustrators, editors, just some wonderful book people. And so uh, since I've published books, it's a group I get to work with every week, love them to death. It is a paid mastermind. It's a very low barrier entry. And I just absolutely love this group. Well, this past week, the question was, how do you sell a thousand books? Because most independent authors or self-published authors don't get there. It's an incredibly difficult thing to do. I've been very fortunate and blessed I've done it twice. I've done it with my uh, Eye Doctor book, Practice Progress, and I've also done it on a devotional commentary on the book of Ruth called Joy in Trials. And so, since this is the beginning of the year, I thought, well, let me sit down with everyone and explain to them exactly what I did each one of those years that got me to 1,000 copies sold in a 12-month time period. So I go through that step-by-step. Step. There's a lot of Q&A, back and forth. And along the way, we even squeeze in a conversation about chat GPT, which may very well be a book author discussion and a future podcast. But for here, enjoy it. If you are watching, this is in Zoom style. And if you're listening, um, just uh, do your best with the q and I do my best to speak clearly. But this is how to sell 1,000 books in 12 months. Thank you for watching. And always, friends, if you want to know more about my coaching, check out CapitalizeYourBest.com. That's CapitalizeYourBest.com. And if you're interested in this book mastermind, just reach out to me directly, and I'd be glad to give you a two Thursday access so you can check it out for free. Guys, enjoy this seminar. Talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Well, gang, Happy New Year, of course. It's great to see you all. Um, I love New Year's. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I always used, when I was a pastor, I used to tell my uh, congregation, you know, God doesn't turn the pages of the calendar, but we do. And so when you have those moments, you know, it it does us right to to reckon the change of days, you know. So I love the new year. I love, I love new plans. I love word of the years. I love new goals, all that good stuff. So I, I hope the new year's going well for you. If we have time at the end, maybe we'll hear some of the, the plans that you guys have for the new year. But today's topic is a barn burner, how to sell a thousand books in 12 months. And uh, I've done it twice. Um, Tom did it. Uh, Tom sold uh, about 3,000 copies of one of his books. Um, ha has anyone else? It it's not an earmark for how great we are. None of us, none of that matters. But I, you know, I had to put a pin on the board and say, here's how to do this in a certain amount of time. Um, and so uh, I did it twice. I did it once with a book for eye doctors. Um, and I did it once in a devotional. Now, the book for eye doctors price point started out at $29.95. Um, it was a book called Practice Progress. Um, to, you know, uh, play on words that your pra IKEA practice is going to progress, um, that kind of thing. And that book's still available on um, Amazon, but it doesn't really sell anymore. It's about 11 years old. And so some of the, you know, it, it didn't incorporate a lot of the technology that's available today. Um, but we'll still pop up every now and then. We'll sell one. Um, charted in six countries. Um, and I'm going to go through all that. Uh, and this might be a two-parter. We'll see. And then the other one was a complete surprise. It's a, a book called Joy in Trials. It's a book that I'm, I created from my sermons on the book of Ruth. And believe it or not, when I published it, there was not a book on Amazon titled that. 
And so I did, I kept, uh, when I was trying to figure out how to title the book, I did that with Amazon open. So every time I wanted to, uh, I thought, well, maybe I'll call it this. I typed it in Amazon. And if a book came up with that title, I immediately rejected it. And so the start of the plan was my titles needed to be unique. I'm going to tell you, I think that the sales for joy and trials is more due to the title than the content, to be honest with you. I think I think I caught a little bit of, you know, a little bit of lightning in there. And that book is about nine years old. It has a wonderfully simplistic cover, but it was designed by a graphic artist. I mean, it's a, a black cover with joy and trials, but she did a great job with that. And the majority of those sales have come from the UK. And I cannot tell you why. Um, you know, other than the momentum I built spilled into the UK and it found an audience there. Um, so uh, Praxis Progress took a good long time to write just because it was very technical. Um, I mean, I was a practicing eye care consultant at that time. So it was, you know, let me coalesce this into a book. Um, I did it eight by 10 because I didn't, I mean, again, this is 2012. So the I was using at that time what Amazon was calling Create Space. Amazon didn't even own Create Space at that time. Um, I didn't have the editing abilities. So I just went with, well, I'll just, it's easier for me to take my eight by 10 Word document and slide it over into an eight by 10 book. And so it's it's a workbook styled. Um, and then uh, Join Trials is, that is about a five by seven kind of style. Uh, that one was easier to write because I had already preached the Book of Ruth. And I wrote manuscript style for my sermons. So um, I still have designs for publishing those books to go because when you write manuscript style and you go from book one to from verse one to the end of it, you essentially have a commentary on an entire book of the Bible. So one day I'm going to endeavor to get my book of Romans book out, but we probably don't need another book on the book of Romans. There's there's 14,000 of them, but they're popular. That's why people keep publishing them. So that was the genesis of both of them. Um, uh, but 2012 was when Practice Progress came out. I, had, I did revise the cover at one point in time, and then I later included it in a seven-book series for eye doctors called ProSight Success. So uh, it did experience some revisions, but when it launched, I sold 1,000 copies in 12 months. Um, so I am going to lay out what I did and the pattern of what I did then is still relevant today. How many platforms you put it on is what's different. Um, I did that book primarily through Facebook, um, but today you have multiple platforms. I'm going to give this caveat before I get started. There is no cheat code. There is not a cheat code at all. And what I mean by that is this will take you hard work for a year. For me as an author, my success, I would say, is not that I sold a thousand books, is that it enabled me to have 60 books on Amazon. And I've sold as few as nine copies and as many as whatever these two have hit. Um, but when I put out Practice Progress, I eventually put out seven books for eye doctors sequential. Boom, 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 boom. Then I took those seven and I created an online course. I created a 300 page PDF for $179 that I then sold to eye doctors. And so that's how, when I was a church planter, we ate. Half my salary came from being a pastor. Half of it came being an eye doctor consultant. So that was the push for that. So my success was necessary. Um, but the success of practice progress enabled me to keep putting books out. The same people bought them then create a course, uh, which turned into consulting opportunities. Um, so that's the genesis. I'm going to focus primarily on practice progress because that um, strategy was developed there. Um, but I will include the strategies I included uh, for joy and trials. And you guys feel free to ask me questions about how it applies to your genre. This same strategy would work to some extent if you're selling a course um, but I'm primarily focusing on what we're doing on Amazon, um, if that makes sense. So before I jump in, any any questions about sort of the lay of the land or where we're going from there? Anybody? Feel free. All right. Great. OK, so uh, I'm not going to talk at all about writing your book. You guys are the experts. And so that is just a different topic for a different day. So. 
Um, I'm going to start from the place that you either um, nearly have your book done or you have a book completed. That's the starting point I'm going to start for your 12 months. Because pre-selling is absolutely uh, valuable. And if you have a book and you haven't pre-sold, totally okay. Um, but pre-selling may just be pre-publication publicity. And, and we're going to do it at that. Um, the platforms I used in that day, and I'll go through all of them, but the primary social media was Facebook. That included a Facebook business page and my interaction with Facebook groups. Now, back then, I didn't have a private Facebook group. I would now, but then I just joined other Facebook groups. And at that point in time, I was joining for eye care professionals. So it was a very young thing at that point in time. I did do some LinkedIn work and I did join a couple of LinkedIn groups, but it wasn't my emphasis. Today, I would. But at that point in time, uh, that's the platform. I had a website, uh, which I hate to say when I started suffering seizures, I lost the website. I lost all the emails like I did. I lost a lot of the work I did for that group. I lost when I had seizures because quite honestly, when I got the notifications, I wasn't reading the emails and my brain didn't work. And I let the, you guys know how they go. The URL expired. And then, you know, I had to start from scratch again from a few years ago, but I had a website. Um, and uh, on that website, uh, blogging was absolutely essential. And I was continuously building an email list. Um, and so that's that was my strategy, was my, my website, my blog, my email list, Facebook, my Facebook page, and joining Facebook groups. That's what I did in 2012. Um, so here's where we went. On my Facebook business page in 2012, I posted every single day, every single day. On my personal page, I posted every day, but I only talked about the eye care stuff about two to three times a week. And the reason for that back then is I was still a full-time pastor. And be, I'll just be quite honest with you, back then, despite the fact I was planting a church, a lot of people didn't like me talking about business on my personal page. And so um, that was just the reality of the church plant and the context. They they knew I had to do it, but they wanted me to kind of keep those worlds separate. The reality of that's a little bit different for today. But on that business page, I, I did something every single day. I was in the Facebook groups that I was a part of, and I was posting in them three or four days a week. I really was. As an active participant, not an active solicitor. You understand the difference? I was just a good human being in there. So when an eye doctor said, hey, how do you deal with patients when they don't want to pay for their contact lens exam? I would be the one giving the answer to that question. And all I was doing is establishing myself as a decent human being who had wisdom. I was posting topics, but I was always posting topics in a place of, hey, I've seen this work. So I wanted to establish myself and listen, let's be, everybody in this room own it. You are an expert. Every one of you, okay? You So just own it. Every one of you is an expert. You've written a book. You've published a book. You have wonderful humility, but you are an expert. And when you are online, you don't have to couch your advice. You are an expert. So if someone says, you know, I, I don't understand why there's two different verses of Sermon on the Mount, Joe is going to say, well, when I've been teaching this for years, this is what I've always explained, like, because Joe's an expert, Right. When we talk about editing, Michelle's like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Don't hesitate. You are an expert. We might, I, mean, I know 4,000 books a day are published on Amazon, but I also know that there's seven and a half billion people in the world. You're the expert, okay? So I was in those groups, sharing, answering questions, being a good human being. Now, today, I, I would use my own personal group as well, but I, I didn't on that day. So, all right, so I'm posting on my Facebook group every single day, on my Facebook page, forgive me. Um, my personal page, I would mention a little bit, I was in those groups as much as I could be, multiple groups. Because my job, once the book was written, was to market it, and I needed an audience. 
I had a great audience locally because I was an eye care consultant. I could go to doctors in the area and they knew who we were, but I was trying to break beyond the two counties that I worked in. Okay, over on my website. At that time, I was writing three blogs a week. And they were on my topic. And they always ended with, if you'd like to know more or if you'd like to learn about practice progress, you know, but they were me giving knowledge three days a week of some sort. It might be what a little bit of what I talked about on the Facebook page, because I'm trying to, I mean, I can't create tons and tons of new content every day, but three days a week, I was writing a 250 to 500 word blog. I would take that blog and I was building an email list. We're going to talk about getting emails. And I would email them every time I wrote a blog. So my day would look like this. Let's say it was a morning where I was working as a consultant, not as a church planter. If I hadn't, I'd wake up and I'd knock out 250 page, 250 words. I would. Then I'd go to my blog. I would post it there. I would then format it for an email. I'd email everybody on my email list. Then, back then, Facebook didn't care. I would share the link to my blog onto my business page, you know, like with a little teaser, like, hey, I'm talking about this, go check it out. Facebook doesn't like that anymore. But back then you could post links a lot more friendly. And then I would probably do it on LinkedIn. And then I'd start spending some time in the pages. And then so like three days a week were really intensive of what I was doing there. Then I would go into these groups. And when I'm having these connections, I'm friending all these people. I'm friending them all. Because I need to go from marketing to establishing a lead. Marketing is what you and I do with the Tommy gun, right? We're putting out content, 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 right? But a lead is when all of a sudden I start having a conversation with someone. That's different. All of a sudden they are a lead. Hey, doc, tell me about your practice. Where are you? I'm in Iowa. Man, I was amazing. Drove through Iowa with my family one time. Absolutely love it. How long have you been practicing? you know, 12 years. I was like, man, can you imagine, can you just, I, I remember starting out in 2000 and my doctors hated the, you know, just that, just having a conversation and then establishing the lead. Cause I was trying to either make a sale of my book or trying to get a contract as a consultant, uh, those things. And that was my pattern for a year, for a year, every single time that I made progress on the Amazon uh, sales list, I was telling the world about it. Now, I was in a very niche category, optometry. If I sold five books in a day, I was number one. You know, it's great to be in a niche category, it really is. Uh, there, there's sometimes you can sell two books and climb into the top 10. Um, I paid attention to the international sales. And I would screenshot that and let people know, not bragging necessarily about myself, like so excited to see the impact of practice progress in Australia. Uh, you know, those kind of I'm keeping momentum, momentum, momentum. Now, a big break happened for me. Here's the thing I did not have control over. And, and then a minute, a minute, we're going to start talking about what it looks like for you guys. But this is when you break in to start making sales, like 70 sales in a day. A friend of mine who read the book, who was an optometrist, liked it. And in a private doctor-only group, he shared the link. It was a North Carolina optometrist group. And he said, hey, guys, my a friend of mine, Gordon Duggan, just published a book. I think it's got some great resources in it. You might want to check it out. And I didn't know he did it. But I was checking those Amazon sales every day, and I sold 73 books in one day at $29.95. And I thought, you know, bestseller, here it comes. You know what I'm saying? Like it was the single best day I'd ever had online. And it and it, and it it decreased and decreased and, and that kind of thing. But that was the kind of momentum it took to keep the book in, up in Amazon. At that point in time, Amazon's going to like it. You know, Amazon, Amazon's going to start pushing it in its algorithm because I'm maintaining that top 10 space in optometry and they're going to care if you sell 73 books in a day. At some point in time, for any of us to break through, 
someone of some influence is going to have to start speaking about our books. Because we have to, at some point in time, borrow someone's greater credibility. You can ask people to do that, of course. But it's even better when someone spontaneously likes what you've done and then they share it to their audience. Um, there is a book that if you want to read, it's about selling physical products on Amazon. But I think the book has a lot of relevance for being an author. The book's called 12 Months to 1 Million, and it's a book about if you're selling a physical product on Amazon, how do you scale that? And the author's formula for that is five products, $30, 25 orders a day equals a million dollar business. And he teaches people how to launch products. So grab it on audio if you want or something. But I think there's a lot of there's a lot of marketing application for being an author if you read that book. So um, I've listened to it twice. I think there's a lot of good stuff out there. But let me go back, repeat. I want to take questions. And then we want to map out a strategy for you guys. Like I said, this is not cheat code stuff. This is this is the hard work. But where where was I? Every day on my business page, interacting in a private group, a couple of times a week on my personal page, three blogs a week. Those three blogs were emailed out. Those three blogs were shared on various other platforms, maybe LinkedIn, Facebook. The participation in the groups is what got me that audience. I shared every success when it was on Amazon and then it broke. And I had probably had, I don't know, three, 400 sales when it broke and an eye doctor shared it for me. I mean, he he read the book and believed in it, but he also saw, hey, this book's making an impact. And then when he did, that's when the, the gates opened up and I really started making sales. So that was my formula. Um, I can speak to joy and trials if you want, but that's a lot of data on the front end. Um, so let's stop for a minute and maybe answer some questions. I can come back in and talk about doing this in a spiritual work uh, like joy and trials. But what questions maybe could I answer at this point for you? Shimmy. What was the title of that book again? The first one was called Practice Progress. And um, let me see. It's still there, I think. I'm, I may only sell two or three copies a year because, like I said, uh, it, it's 11 years old and the, the it, it doesn't address technology at all. So uh, the one about share about selling on Amazon. Oh, I apologize. Uh, 12 months to one million. Um, and the author's name, he's got three names. Uh, Ryan Daniel Moran, M O R A N. Tell you what, let me um, let me put it in the in the chat for you guys. Um, when we launched our coffee company last year, that was the pattern we did for that. Um, and and he his his emphasis is chart your story, chart your story, everything. If, I mean, if I mean, chart everything from the the hard days of writing to you know taking a video of yourself checking your Amazon sales, and, but he he's like you've got to create an audience of interest around what you do. So his five products would all go to the same customer. So like when we launched the coffee last year, it's brain healthy coffee. Um, it's a coffee designed by the Harvard styles. And so our next product will be a brain healthy product. That's the idea, but he's got some great tips on there about how to, how to, um, do that. But yeah, so the links in the, um, links in the chat, did anyone else have any initial questions after that, that quick data dump? <laughs> All right. Rock and roll. All right. Well, let's talk about joy and trials then. Okay. So joy and trials, um, I approached it a little bit differently because it was published years later. Um, 
And so joy and trials is, um, I call it a devotional commentary because I do go verse by verse. Um, and then I turned it into a devotion. And, uh, and if you know the, the story of Ruth, calling it joy and trials makes a lot of sense. And so the sense from there. Um, when was that published? It, it's going to be helpful for me sharing that with you. Um, joy and trials came out right after my parents passed. And um, came out in 2012. So basically, um, you know, not far after I had published Practice Progress. Um, the whole premise of Joint Trials, um, I, so first of all, I had built a community online. I mean, I'm a daily poster online. I shared the journey of my parents passing and seizures, which was my 2012 story. and. Um, so people knew that was a lot of what I had gone through. Um, so when I shared the Joy and Trials book, it was all that stuff was very fresh with me. And so my audience knew that I had just walked through an immense number of trials. They knew I was in the midst of it. So publishing that book attached to my story made people very interested. I would love to tell you that that was strategic in 2012, but my brain was scrambled. And that was the book I had been working on as, because at that point in time, I was untreated seizures. I wasn't on brain meds yet. So my, and so it, I was just trying to get that book out because I was losing my brain. And that's why I paid for a designer for the cover. Um, I had, I think three books out already. And I had designed them all and they looked terrible. And so I, I just couldn't do it anymore. And so, um, you know, having her design that was really, really helpful. So when we talk about writing a book with a spiritual purpose, gathering in an audience who knows you with consistent content is incredibly important. I mean, regularly, whatever is your platform, I would say be on all of them, but whichever one you're you're most comfortable with, Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, whatever the case may be, posting regularly very earnest and sincere content that let people know who you are. Like revealing uh, as much as you're comfortable, your personality, that brings in and grows an audience. Now, we've talked about this before. If you want an audience online, you got to go friend 20 people a day. <laughs> You know, Facebook will tell you, hey, you got these people in common. And you know what? Here's the thing. If they don't want to be your friend, they're not going to accept a friend request. So it's not a harm. You know, I'll never know who says no. I, I don't I don't go back and go, hey, who didn't accept my friend request yesterday? So I'm looking for 20 people. If you want to build an audience, if you don't do that, you're just waiting for people to find you. And it just the world just doesn't work that way in building an audience. So find those mutual friends. Find the groups with the largest number. You'll say, hey, you got 47 mutual friends. You should be friends with that person. Uh, they're not surprised to get a friend request from you, even if they don't know you. They go, oh, this person's friends with all my church friends. And then so build an audience, share with your audience. And that way, when you start sharing about your published works, they're already with you. So I was doing that. I was, you know. Uh, I was walking through the loss of my parents and the beginnings of the, the loss of my health. And when I said, I'm about to publish a book, Joy and Trials in the Book of Ruth, there was interest in that topic because of what I went through. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. I think the intro of that book addresses the loss of my parents. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but I haven't read it in years. Um, so that's the first thing. It, and I, this is true for anything. You're not going to sell 50 books, much less a thousand, if you're not building an audience. If you don't have an audience to speak to and you tell people a book comes out, no one knows that a book comes out. And 4,000 books a day are published. And our book, uh, you know, most of our stuff's print on demand, but imagine there is a physical copy in the Amazon warehouse. The distributor here in town that I have has millions of books in it. 
and I'm one book on the shelf. When I type, sometimes when I type in my own name in a title of one of my books in Amazon, my book doesn't come up. You know, like it's it's hard to be found. And so if you want to be found, you have to build an audience. And so, and, and then when you connect, I'm writing this, I'm writing about this, it, it makes people a little bit easier to find you. So I'm going to say that helped joy in trials, um, that I was building an audience by living out my life as much as comfortable as I was. And the topic was relevant. Like I said, I wish it was strategic that I was like, I should write about a book about joy and trials. It, it, it just happened to be a book I had been working on in the midst of all those things. Um, uh, Phil, I'm glad to see you. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I hope the snow is enjoyable. Uh, be careful out there, man. Oh, you're ready. You got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the advantages of uh, not using video all the time. <laughs> yeah, you change. Be around. careful. Be careful. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Keep that camera closed. And yeah, my uh, camera's acting better now too. So far. Well, we'll put the recording up. If not today, we'll put it up tomorrow. So uh, feel okay. free to to check that out. But uh, be safe. It's good to see you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Take care. Be blessed. So um, thanks, man. So what I was doing with Joy and Trials, at that point in time, I did, and I still have it. I don't populate it as much. I had created, um, you know, I didn't, I, I couldn't talk about Joy and Trials on my I care business page. No one would care. So I have a page now called uh, Gospel Rich Books. So whenever I publish something spiritually, I publish it underneath that banner. And that's where I was posting. So I was still on my personal blog at that point in time, writing three blogs a day about trials. And I have tons of content. I'm a pastor, you know, but I mean, for you guys, you, you've got to write around your content. But I was writing three blogs a day. Um, I was still emailing three days a week because I have a prayer list that as a pastor, I was emailing all the time. So I would email them. I was posting the blog to the Gospel Rich Facebook page, and I was repeating the same pattern. Blog, email, share the blog over to Facebook, post every single day on my Facebook page, getting involved in groups, which is very easy. I mean, very easy to find. Uh, if you want to find a Facebook group about trials or losing your parents, or I mean, there's, you know what I'm saying? I, I niched down because you know, you want that book to land in the hands of someone. So Joy and Trials is going to hit either someone who has an interest in the book of Ruth. So if someone types in the book of Ruth, I'm going to be found. Uh, someone who is trying to find a book about, like I said, about, about trials of some sort, it hit a lot of categories. Well, then those are the Facebook groups I need to be involved in. It charts, like for some reason right now, the uh, um, the paperback doesn't show me my categories but i i've sold the most on kindle for that one and let's see here um one of the categories that i'm in is grief and counseling and so that was one and there's another one called death and grief so and then amazon gave me a third category so i'm death and grief counseling old testament commentary and Christian death and grief. And so you guys all know that you, you get two categories, but as you sell, Amazon will give you additional categories. And if you haven't ever experienced that, be your most strategic with the first two. Um, but when you put in those, um, the keywords, you know, uh, they're going mean, to take advantage of all seven of those. And a, and a trick for that is use keywords that are also topic, like categories you would like to place in. So you could type grief, you could do counseling, make your keywords to help the Amazon to find you a different category. So that's just a, a, a posting trick. But I followed the exact same pattern for that, is that it was three blogs a week to an email list, to sharing the blog over, to being online five, seven days a week posting being in groups that allow me to be a good human being in those groups and a contributor, friending people, bringing them back in. Um, it's a lot of work, but think about this. Let's say you wanted to publish a book a year from now. I hope you do, right? And you're like, I'm going to write a book about this topic. 
if you take the 12 months to 1 million approach, if you chronicle that journey in three blogs a week, you will literally have another book to work with at the end of it. You might have a companion book or you might have a workbook or you might have, like if you're doing the writing for blogs, it can supplement. You could literally write the majority of the book on the blog if you wanted to. You could take those three days a week and write the book and then culminate and then uh, and then take in those blogs and edit them into a book. My first book was just a collection of blog writings. So it could be the way you write it. You're like, I'm going to write three blogs a week for 52 weeks and you have a book. And it, it makes it a little bit easier in the strategy. You've got to do, you know, just ask chat GPT to write an outline for you. And you just go from there. If that's what you got to do, bring it all back in. But I mean, it, it you're going to have to do some planning to figure out how to, to write three blogs a week if you don't have a book. But using the blogs as a basis for promotion is great if you reproduce it. We all know that if we go to practiceprogress.com forward slash blog, no one cares that I posted anything. No one knows that blog is there. Like just posting it on my blog, all that does is just, you know, fling something into the dark. The world has to know it's there. So my email is always pointed back. So uh, enough of that strategy for um, joy and trials. So that's how I, I pulled that together in terms of like the promotion. And I didn't have the eye doctor recommendation for that one for whatever reason. And I'll never know. Someone in the UK must have loved that book. There's no reason one day to have 10 copies sold in the UK without someone liking it and sharing it. I'll never know where that came from, but uh, it, it consistently it consistently sells in the UK. So that book right now, I'm 1200th in one category. I have no idea where I am uh, in the UK, but uh, it, it continually it continually shows up there. How can we answer some questions, guys? What can we answer? Um, I'm just wondering, do you not ever get overwhelmed by all the work constantly going, going, going? Um, you know, guys, uh, I, I don't I, I don't want to sound inhuman. I don't get overwhelmed. Um, I do get I do get brain fatigue. I mean, there's times like that. But um, I mean, I tell folks I, I don't have a hobby. I mean, running is my hobby. Right. I'm a runner. And it takes care of a lot of needs. I mean, it keeps me healthy. Um, I'm either listening to music or a podcast or a book when I'm running. Mm. And I'm designed to be fueled by that content. Don't get me wrong. I've got a couple of silly podcasts I listen to because every now and then you just got to give yourself a break. But I mean, like this morning I got up and there's a devotional podcast I listen to. And then I did some stretching uh, with um, an affirmation podcast. And then I immediately rolled into uh, a book I listen to every January called The 10X Rule. And that when I'm done and I'm making my smoothie, I'm still listening to that. When I go in there and shave, I'm listening to that. And then I take a break. And then I'm getting my daughter out the door and I'm not listening to anything when I take her to school. And then the moment I drop her off, I pull up the camera and I start recording Reels and TikToks for the day. I mean, it's it's the design I have, but um, so I mean, less overwhelmed. But there are times I get brain fatigue, and when I get brain fatigue, I know pull away from listening to two books at a time, or even hey, for the next three days, just listen to something lighthearted, um, or just listen to music. Um, but I mean, it. I mean, our brains are muscles. And, and, and they really are. And, and I believe, you know, I, I know we, what's the number we use less than 10% of the capacity of our brain. So ever since I, you know, I, I have a brain injury. I mean, I have epilepsy. My question to me is, well, then what do I got to do? You know, where, where, where do I tap into? Um, and then when I get arrogant, God lets me know I'm getting arrogant or my wife through God through my wife. Lets me, <laughs> lets me know. Like, uh, and, and I need people to rein me in. I mean, all the time I have a mentor who I've, pledged I won't start any new projects without you know getting wisdom from him and that kind of thing but 
I I fall into just enjoying it. I really do. I mean, I I like I like producing in some way most every day. So that's a very long answer. I'm sorry, Eileen, but uh, well, thank you. Le- less overwhelmed, but there are days I do get brain fatigue, and I have to decide: is that just a result of my brain condition, or am I not taking care of myself? Like I don't really eat sweets. Sweets don't help my brain. Mm-hmm. You know how many sweets I've had in the last week. Like, I mean, like my skin's breaking out. I feel like I'm 13 years old. But, because, <laughs> but my wife made these amazing sugar cookies and a homemade icing. And and I, I honor my wife. She knows I don't use If she's going to make sweets, I'm going to eat it. You know what I'm saying? That's her expression of love, right? But she knows I don't do sweets every day. It's not good for my brain. But if she makes them, I'm going to eat them over the holidays. But she knows they're gone. Like, I'm not eating sweets. I don't know when I'll have another sweet at that point in time. It just doesn't help my brain. So, uh um, yeah, I'm fascinated by brain capacity. I am. So, uh, um, but I, I do get tired. Joe, what's up? Um, I w- was just curious. You mentioned that you did the blog, like three blogs a week, and then you sent that blog to your email list. Is that, did I understand that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Where or how do you develop this email list? Very good. Great question. Uh, I, it was on my topic. I was waiting for someone to ask. Good for you, Joe. You can develop an email list really in two ways. And it takes hard work. I mean, I'm just saying it, it, it's hard work. Now, you can do it organically. If you're on LinkedIn, and this is what Tom used to do, and you friend someone on LinkedIn, he would ask them, hey, I've got this, I've got this, you know, one sheet about eye doctors. Can I email it to you? Would you mind? Or whatever. I mean, you've got to have a, you've got to have a resource. There's got to be a reason for someone to care to get your email. I I encourage us all to write a three pager of some sort, like some resource, some devotional so that you can friend someone on any platform. LinkedIn works really well and say, Hey, so when someone friends you, you should immediately message them and say, hey, thanks for accepting my friend request. Mm-hmm. But say, I've got a free devotional I really like to give my friends. Would you mind if I emailed it to you? And the moment they say yes, you capture that email and you create an email list. Tom did that with 15,000 emails. That's the genesis of this group. Now, we all got to know, at the largest this group's ever been, it's been 22 people. And he had 15,000 emails. I'm just going to let you know that. So I have an email group of eye doctors that's 500. And I had to go, I literally had to go back and harvest those after I lost them all. It was painstaking. I have an email list of a thousand pastors, but I literally had to go harvest each one of them. So when I send an email out, I decide what target group it goes to. Um, But that's it. Create a three page devotional. You know, something that's, that's, I mean, whatever your category is. And if you can't figure out what to give away, Let's we'll brainstorm in this group. But uh, now the other thing to do is to create a uh, a lead gen page. Um, let me see real quick if I can share one with you. I don't know if I'm logged in right now. I recently did a uh, a business seminar helping. Um, um, helping small businesses break the $250,000 barrier. So uh, it was, um, let's see here. And if you follow me on Facebook, you probably got worn out. I mean, I, I was talking about it all the time. Um, and I created, where's my share screen button? So here was the page. Can everybody see that? So here was the page for my seminar. And if you wanted to go to the seminar, you had to register and that popped up. You can create a page like this that says, I have a free devotional. Or you can take one of your older books and share the PDF. And say, would you like this? And they have to click a button and give you one of these. These pages are not hard to design. If you need help with it, 
Um, I'll try to give you some help with it. Um, they're companies that do it really, really affordable, uh, affordably, excuse me. Um, but you've got to have, you know, you know, some, something of value that they go, yeah, um, that's exactly what I need. Let me find one more for you. Um, when I wrote my eye doctor course, you don't have to see me logging all the stuff. Let me pull this up. Um, I gave away a free, a free book. It was maybe 32 pages long. Um, so I basically took my course, compiled it into uh, a, a brief 30 pager and made a cover out of it. All right, let me pull this up here. Man, my stomach just growled. I'm hungry. Let's see here. So here we go. This is an example. Let's say you write a, a, a small devotional. And so the book I wrote was The Seven Essentials of Profitable Eye Care. And I forget what the domain was. I think I think it's literally ProfitableEyeCare.com. Um, this was the topics. That was the cover that I had. You can tell I got that made on Fiverr, probably. Um, I don't use Fiverr anymore, but you know, whatever the case may be. This is me with long hair um, back when I was preaching. Very simple page, right? Very simple page. If you wanted this ebook, you typed in your name, submit. Now, right now, in my email box, I've got a free copy of that. And then it took me to an offer for my course. You don't have to do that. You can just do a thank you page. But... I promoted that a ton on Facebook. I was like, hey, would you like a free copy of Seven Essentials of Profitable Eye Care, free, no charge or whatever. And the whole goal of this was for me to get that email. And so they're called lead gen pages or lead pages or drop pages. They've got, But that's essentially it. The thing is, no one wants an email from you unless you've got a reason to communicate. Create something small. You don't even have to do a page like that. Friend people on Facebook or on LinkedIn and then just say, hey, I, I've written this devotional and I send it out to all my friends. And they'll say yes or no. But that's the hard work of, of building a list and selling a thousand copies. And um, yeah, but uh, there's a couple of that. So, so Joe, as you build your audience, I mean, that's a great way to get the email list. Uh, because when you start emailing them, in clusters, you want them to to have agreed to get an email from you. Um, when I first started working with Tom three or four years ago, however long ago it was, he had that list email list of 15,000 and he had not emailed them in a while. So I started sending out emails of 15,000 and we got a ton of complaints. And uh, Constant Contact shut us down for a little while. So again, you, you want to make sure that people agree and it, you have to continually email them for them to remember you. If your list goes cold and you email them again, they're going to complain that you're spamming them. But uh, eat the, and so another thing to do, um, if you guys don't mind me just throwing out ideas, if you create a Facebook group or a LinkedIn group, you can make it a requirement, well, well, you can make a question. You can say, uh, thank you for joining the group. Would you like a free copy of the seven essentials of eye care when they join the group? And if they say yes, they give you your email and then you go from there. And so you don't even have to create a lead gen page for that. You just make that question one of the requirements of joining the group. And they can say no. I have people all the time in my group go, no, not right now. Great, they're still in the group. But many people, of course, will go, yeah, I'd love a free copy of your book. Then I've got their email. And emails can't take away from you. You know, Facebook can go away, constant contact can go away. You can get seizures and lose your whole email list. But if you got a spreadsheet somewhere with your emails, you've got them. They're your contact. Other thoughts or questions about the, the model? And Eileen, I didn't go to three blogs a week immediately. I mean, it's muscles. You know, it, it's just muscles. Uh, um, started out with one. <laughs> I'm doing one blog a week and I'm finding that hard enough just to do that. 
How many how many words do you think it is? It varies because it depends on. Sometimes I get really carried away with the topic. So, if you get carried away, you have three blogs. Just tell yourself. Yeah. If I get carried away, I have three. It's, I got part one. I'll do that on a week. If I write something long, I'll say, "Hey, uh, this is part one." And then on the second blog, the first thing I will say is, "If you miss part one, check this out." I'll put the link back to that. You know, do the backlinking yeah. thing. Um, but if you're blogging, don't get carried away. Break it up. I mean, just because okay. con content's too hard to come by. And we got lives. So, yeah, completely. Or, or just ask chat GPT to write for you. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> this is just the reality. So, uh, um, I, I should, I'm not using the right computer. I should have um, uh, pulled up chat GPT so I could... Uh, demonstrate this in real time i don't want us to quit writing <laughs> i really don't <laughs> but uh it, it is shocking if you needed uh when you need something when the, the well runs dry what other questions could we answer on this topic i would like to see that chat thing because it's even if you don't use it for writing i mean it's so useful for the social media thing's really hard for me so let, you know, having me, that uh, resource even for that would be amazing. Let me see if I can hop in here real quick on my other computer. Hold on a second. I'm sure I can. I mean, do you, the rest of you guys, would you like that too? Sure, I'll show you. Yeah. So uh, let me see here. Let me hop in. I see nodding heads. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I don't know which one I, direction I'm going to be facing here in a minute. Okay, I'm looking at you. Okay, here we go. Can you still hear me? Uh, feel free to speak. Yeah, I just can't. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry, guys. All right. Let me share my screen with you. All right. This is openchatai.com, right? And see where it says new chat? And I didn't, even, and then here it is. So um, let's see, write, write a 250 word blog, um, uh, sympathizing, I should use a different word I can't spell today, uh, on how difficult it is to write a blog. <laughs> so I'm asking you to write a 250 word blog on how difficult it is to write a blog. All right, there it is. It's literally three points, the whole deal. It's writing the blog for you. It's stunning. I mean, it's, it's literally shocking. And you may not like its style. Now, watch this. Um, I have, I, and all of this I've experimented with. I've never, I've never even tried this, but So now I'm going to, it's still writing, so I'm going to write a 250 word blog in Old English style on, oh, let me do this. Um, with a Southern accent, let's see if it'll do that. Well, y'all, now it's writing. So now it's writing a brand new blog in the style if you grew up where I grew up. So you you could do this. Uh, like it is possible to write a novel this way if you took it about a thousand words at a time, maybe 500 words at a time. Um, it, and so I, the, the, I've got a, a, an acquaintance who's already trying to start a business with this completely. Like I know what he's doing. He's already offering services and I know what he's doing. He's trying to do all the work through chat GPT. So if you can, good for him. But um, yeah, 
So there we go. Write, writing a good blog requires a combination of creativity. Or, sorry, practice, practicing my old North Carolina accent for you guys. So, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it, it, I'm not going to say it's limitless because it, it will tell you it, it can't do something every now and then, but that's only because like, it'll tell you like, be careful here if you're trying to persuade someone to do something, you know, um, but yeah, that's chat GPT. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I didn't kind of shake my head, but the, you, you can almost, and you just start over again, you know, uh, you can just write in there whatever you want. It's, um, what What are your thoughts, gang? <laughs> I think we've left the one thousand books a year into chat GPT. <laughs> it's my fault, completely my fault. But uh, see if you can get an account and play around with it. See if you can. Well, get an it's not really off subject because if it can help us with advertising, then it's right. you're right. I mean, and and we, I will tell, I will tell everyone. The only cheat code to selling books is paying someone who's good to do it for you. And I'm not talking about, you know, the private publishers who are like, pay us $5,000. I mean, most of them do not do it for you. I mean, you need a, a person who can do it. But, you know, uh, that the, the cheat code is typically working really, really hard. It's just not really, I mean, it's just the reality on the front end of being a, an author until you build, you know, my buddy who has a, he writes three novels a year, they're action spy novels, they're 160 to 180 pages a year, he has a contract. Um, I mean, he's online every day uh, and he's got a very snarky brand, you know, his personality is very witty, snarky, you know, I wouldn't post some of the stuff he posts, but that's okay. Um, I mean, that's his style, but he's on there every day. People know he's an author. He likes to write in an old school typewriter. He's got the typewriter and he talks about that and he shares his progress and he lets people coming out and he's got an audience. I mean, he's got a book deal and, um, but I mean, he works hard. He's also a, a full-time weatherman. And so he's a weatherman, and then he writes novels on the side. He included me as a character one time and killed me off. I was in there about 20 pages. I was like, thanks, man. He goes, nah, I just needed a name. It was no honor. I was like, all right. I bought a copy of the book anyway. So, so yeah, gang, that's it. Selling a 1,000 books. It's January 4th. You know, it's January 4th. But it, it, is, it is discipline. It is hard work. But imagine... Where you be January 4th, 2020, whatever, four. If you did this, let's say you sold 750, great. <laughs> you know, so, let's say you sold 550, great. By the time you rolled into 2024 and you had your next novel out, you would have an audience who bought your book. So last year, if any of you guys follow me on Facebook, I started in April talking a lot about my coaching program. So my, you know what I'm saying? It's been eight months of coaching program talk. I don't talk about it every day. I've got a brand, Capitalize Your Best. I've built it. I talk about it two to three days a week on my personal page. I've got a private group. We talk about it. And it's been hard work. And there's been three weeks at a time where no one responds. But as I roll into this year, people contact me about the course now. Um, and I'm not, it's not where I want it to be, but I know I'll continue to do that to 2023 and then 2024, it'll be different. It's that way for all of us. Um, unfortunately, it, it's like, it, it's like being a rock star in the seventies was easier because back then the record company would put a bunch of money behind you and send you out and tour. And I mean, it's not that way anymore. Right. I mean, you just, I mean, we're, we're everyone's an independent artist. The challenge for all of us now is we thought the book was the hard thing and the book is not the hard thing. Um, so it's, uh, it, I, unfortunately it's just, um, the, the, the book to some of us is going to wind up being a little bit of the easy thing. It really is. But guys, any last questions? It's 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock for some of you guys, or maybe even, uh, Eileen, what time is it there? It's five o'clock in the evening. 
All right. Your day's yeah. here. So, and January 5th. Did I get that wrong, somebody? I thought it was, yeah, uh, me. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't wait to hear what happens on January 5th. And so, <laughs> all right, gang. Um, well, listen, if this topic's helpful, the easiest thing for me to ever talk about is marketing. I, I, if there's topics you'd like for me to address, I'm always happy. Um, one of the uh, experts I'm bringing in to talk to us about is a Amazon category author expert. And she's an expert of helping us find the category at publishing uh, so that we can say we have a bestseller. And that does matter. It really does. Anytime I sell three books as an eye doctor, I chart back on optometry. It's a very niche uh, category. And uh, it does help in your marketing. Doesn't necessarily put money in your in your bank account. Um, but she is a, um, you know, she's an expert in, in that category. Um, but, is she uh, coming in soon? Gordon? She's going to come in by the end of January. I'm just trying to get that. We've got other speakers lined up within the group. Um, she's just trying to figure it out. Um, but yeah, we're going to have her come in really, really soon. Um, she's, a, she's a friend. She's really, really great. Um, like t- tons of, she's just a really good person. So good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And feel free. If you've got a topic that you feel like needs to be addressed, please tell me. Please tell me. And, and if I don't know it, I'll go out and find an expert who does and come on in. So uh, I'm trying to expand, you know, beyond our group of, of circle. After a while, our circle of wisdom gets gets contained and we got to find people who, you know, know stuff we don't know. So, all right, guys, been fun as always. I love talking to you. Thank, Thank you for you. being here and uh, reach out to folks we didn't see, you know, reach out, make sure Phil's okay, make sure Nancy's okay. Um, you know, some of our regulars we haven't seen. If you didn't see them, Please reach out to them. Let them know they were missed. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.